it's another day and uh, it is wow is it that temperature because today I have uh, mr. L um, infrared thermometer so the surface temperature over there is that and then the surface temperature here 14 degrees and on the stove 13 degrees so you know it's not that bad but and I'm told it's zero degrees outside. So, uh, it, it just goes to show even a single skin of uh, some brick and stone, that, that wall there, that's making a difference of about nine degrees. So anyway, I've given the, um, the glass, I can't remember if it's got a note, face plate, front plate, I've given it a clean, um, and then my soot-covered rag is in there, so that will burn good because it's soot. Um, careful, you'll have trace amounts of graphene in that soot. As we all know, graphene is like razor blades. You, you breathe it in, you get it injected, and the monomolecular thin... Um, edge of it will just cut through organic tissue like the finest scalpel so don't go breathing in soot and don't go scrubbing chimneys get somebody else to do the chimney sweep and sacrifice their lungs if you can afford it that is I um, I do all my chimney sweeping myself still haven't done it I'm still not in the mood to do it oh bugger my little Jenga tower didn't work mm, never mind get it burning then get a stick on it I think that's what I don't really watch the videos um, I've made because I made them and I have a, a memory so I can just play things back in my head. Well, I did re-watch um, yesterday's video. It just bursts into flames. But then the flames are so violent, it stops bursting into flames. Anyway, re-watched the video. I was listening back to the bit I talked about at the bottom. And I'm, I'm picturing the scene in my head right now. The look of horror on Rick Mel's face as he sees he's been dismembered. Literal mayhem. Um, if you look up the legal definition of mayhem, it means dismemberment. And then just, I want to say the comically over-the-top spurting of blood, but having seen arterial spurts before, actually, no, <laughs> that is... That's, that's quite a, a realistic spurt of blood. And that's what I like about it. It's just like, I don't know, maybe when he was chatting up the, um, because Rick Mill spent a lot of time <laughs> chatting up birds in Manchester University. And uh, he, he must have got talking with a medical student saying, so, you know, how far can uh, arterial blood spurt? And... Uh, or maybe he just overheard it in a conversation and then... Because I, I just got to think, that sort of attention to detail... It, it, it makes it authentic. And that's the thing as well. I mean, on the one hand you could just say, oh, he's just being silly and, you know, it's not very intelligent. But then it's like, you look into it and it's like, no, this is actually quite... Quite good. Um, quite good. The... the this is quite good in terms of accuracy. So there'll be a lot of people that dismiss slapstick humour as just low brow when you know for the plebs, but ah, <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. I, I changed my Telegram notification um, to the, the bonk sound with uh, Jub's laughter. 
you don't know who Jab is, unless you listen to the hate bus, in which case you do know who Jab is, and I just find that little clip very funny. Which just goes to sort of emphasise my point. Slapstick humour is the best form of humour, and um, it's great. And if you don't like it, then... Honestly, I, I don't know why you watch my videos. I mean, there's no slapstick here, but I'm a slapstick comedy appreciator. And I think uh, in these times, we, we, need, uh, we need something to cheer us up. And proper belly laughs is when you've seen somebody. <laughs> and you know it's supposed to be a stunt, but they're genuinely in pain. But they just carry on acting because it's like, well, the show must go on. And that's dedication. I mean, and the thing is, I'm laughing because I'm thinking of the time uh, Rick Mel hit Adrian Edmondson with a frying pan. And they had to stop filming. And he's saying, oh, fuck. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> and that's funny. Yeah, something like Jackass, which I watched out of horror more than anything else, it wasn't funny. And I don't, un I don't, I'm not sure how I can explain what the difference is. And it's not just that they're Americans, because Jackass was better than Dirty Sanchez, which was Welsh. So, there's just, there's an art to it. And I think Jackass lacks subtlety. But then again, bottom wasn't very subtle so what is it that made bottom funny whereas other bits of slapstick aren't as funny I mean you can you can look at some of the old slapstick stuff well like a Punch and Judy show I mean that's funny or you could say Buster Keaton's I mean Buster Keaton's comedy is incredible because he's like there's a scene where he's on the train and it's going to get derailed unless he hits this uh, rail link with a... Um, he's got like a, a, a big um, wooden sleeper. So he hits it with this. And if he gets it wrong, he's going to end up dead. And I think there's even times with Charlie Chaplin's on roller skates. And he's going really fast past this... Um, past this mezzanine floor... With no, um, th there's no uh, railings or banister to stop him falling off the edge. And if he falls, he's dead. So, it's funny, but it's also at the same time, it's like, you're risking life and limb to make people laugh. So is, is the humour, I, I mean, it definitely is laughing with. Because you're, I think the laughter is celebrating the fact that, oh, they're alive. Oh, that's great. That guy's trying to make me laugh by killing himself. <laughs> and when you consider, I think, I think it's philosophy in a way. Everyone's going to die. Some people get a choice in how they die. And some are quite willing to entertain others whilst risking life and limb. I mean, those people, in effect, they are gladiators. So you know everybody knows the and we associate that with clowns, but the song's called March of the Gladiators. But if you think about it, clowns were all about slapstick comedy. I mean that's literally the idea, like um you got the slapstick which you hit people with it, it's got a piece of wood on it, so it makes this great big clack sound. And it's the slapstick. And so, you know, clowns are busy doing that. So I think the March of the Gladiators is not an insult to whoever that uh, Czech composer was. It's rather, it's a compliment because it's like, look, they are gladiators. They are doing physical violence and hurting one another, but they're doing it to be amusing. And I think it's for the same reason I enjoyed wrestling as a kid, because it's a performance, it's comedy, but it's more on the on the serious side of comedy, if that makes sense. So yeah, I like slapstick comedy, and it has cheered me up. And you know what? I'm going to try and find a, a link for it, and I'll put it in the description of the scene I'm thinking of. 
I think it's when they play chess. No, it's different. No, it's probably the one where he's making Christmas dinner and he's uh, got a cleaver and... Is, is it the one where he's got Christmas dinner? I'll have to have a look. I'll, pro I'll just type in Rick Mel chops his finger off and uh, <laughs> it just... Just even the description of that is... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't say it without thinking of the look on his face. <laughs> and the way he acts. Oh, it's brilliant. It really is. And uh, so I, I, I want to share it with... I say the world. I want to share it with the few people who haven't seen it for other means. If you're watching this video and then you're clicking on the link and you're seeing that scene and it's like it's the first time you've seen it in your life, I think I'll have done a good thing for today. Apart from, you know, this. Speaking of which, let's do a temperature check. So, the wall thermometer is saying 16 degrees. Yeah, we do this, I won't have to repeat the numbers. So we're now getting 10 degrees, 35 on the flu, 21 there. 15 there, so at some point I better take that off, otherwise it'll melt and explode. Getting 40 degrees, and then, yeah, about 200. I like it, up, up to 200 degrees, it'll give you, you know, a, um, up to one decimal point. But then, after 200 degrees, it just goes, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Okay, my um, computer decided to redetect the monitors. Oh, nice. Let's have a look. What's what's the temperature over there on... F really? Twenty-seven degrees. Hang on. What I'm pointing at is see these. <sighs> doesn't feel like 27 degrees. Let's have a look at this wall. Is that saying 23 degrees? Well, it's cool to the touch, but it's not cold to the touch, so that probably is correct. Anyway, a couple more sti- Oh, bugger, I've just realised. I haven't brought any wood in. I'm going to have to go outdoors and get some wood. Right, I'll end it there, because I need to do my thing. And uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.